So you will see in the second section, I break down the components of an accomplishment story. So there are three basic parts and each of the beginning, the middle and the end and I break each of those down further in a way that I'm now gonna describe. The first thing you do is set the scene. So I said that I was a newly minted MBA. And in my earlier story, I said that I was in a consulting practice at PricewaterhouseCoopers. So the people, so you do that so that people will know what your role is. If you don't have that and you begin with the action, then people will be unclear about what it is that you're supposed to be doing and they'll be spending their time trying to figure out whether what you're doing is appropriate or not, rather than spending their time listening to what you have to say. So you want to tell stories so that people will know where they are in the story and they'll be with you, coming along with you as the story unfolds, rather than being caught up in some detail that wasn't clear for them. The next part of the story is the trigger, the inciting incident, what started it all. I was sitting at my desk frustrated because this was my third client that I called and they didn't have a sense of what we offered in the, our um, asset borrowing products. Or my boss came into my office and said, when it's time for you, to develop a new forecast or whatever it is, there's something that kicks the story off. In a fairy tale, the woodcutter's son came into the castle courtyard and the princess looked out of her window and saw him there. That's the point at which the action begins. So for the consulting story, the action began when the head of equity IT told me that his budget was a disaster and it was my job to fix it. Then the next thing that happens is we sit down and make a plan. Often what happens when people in the job market tell their story, they say, well, we had a terrible budget process and uh, or uh, Goldman Sachs had a terrible budget process and I was brought in and after consulting with a bunch of people, I got it right. And the, the, the new controller took me out to lunch, thanking me for my efforts. Well, again, if I'd done that and I hadn't told anything other than the result, you'd know the result and you might be impressed by the result, but you wouldn't know a lot about how I work. So the how I work, doesn't skip right from the problem to the result. The how I work stops and identifies the trigger and identifies what my plan is, what I did to execute against my plan, and most importantly, what I did when the plan did not go as planned. If when we are in a job interview, the interviewer is assuming that no problems come up in the job and that everything happens as it should be. They interview people with 10 years less experience than we have. The reason they need the 10 years more experience is because things do go wrong. And what they need is somebody who can handle things when they go wrong. So, that's the most important part of the middle of the story, which you include. What did you do and what wasn't anticipated and how did you deal with it? Then the end of the story is the result. And obviously when you're going through your result, to the extent that you can, you talk about who benefited and by how much. 